Today we're going to talk about coolant analysis. So starting off with some observations, coolants or antifreeze is often a very neglected fluid on most vehicles. 80% of all the coolant produced is used to refill leaking systems and what that speaks to is that a lot of cooling system maintenance is done on a reactive basis as opposed to a planned basis. And finally, cooling system failures are often cited as the leading cause of engine failures. And what that speaks to is that any attempts to maintain cooling systems um, is going to pay dividends both in terms of engine reliability and longevity. So let's start by looking at the, some of the core functions of a cooling system. A cooling system is designed to pick up heat and distribute it or dissipate it as needed. In order to accomplish that, it needs to both measure temperatures accurately and then regulate the temperatures, the flows, and the pressures, while at the same time minimize corrosion and rust, prevent cavitation, and to maximize the life of hoses, seals, and gaskets. Inevitably, when something does go wrong on a cooling system, it's probably going to affect one or more of these functions. Engine temperature is a critical aspect of uh, proper operation and reliability. Running an engine too cold or hot has implications. Newer engines are generally running hotter in an effort to improve their efficiency, and so that has been placing more stresses on coolants in order to deal with that excessive heat. Coolants are generally a mixture of water, glycol, and corrosion inhibitors. The corrosion inhibitors can either be organic salts or organic acids. Typically, uh, traditionally, there has been conventional coolants that used inorganic salts as their uh, inhibitors. The newer long life or organic acid coolants are using the carboxylates and there's a separate category of coolants that uses a mixture of the two called hybrid or HOPE coolants and they combine both inorganic salts and carboxylates. The hybrid coolants uh, are basically custom designed to the exact metallurgy of the engine and so if certain uh, inhibitor chemicals react with the metallurgy they will restrict you from using them. They're actually very good with those engines. Unfortunately, it also means that there's a little bit more problematic issues making them a universal coolant for all engines. Benefits of coolant analysis are that, number one, you're verifying that the proper coolant is being used and it doesn't contain a mixture of coolants. You're also ensuring that the inhibitor levels are acceptable and suitable for continued use. But beyond the fluid itself, coolant analysis tells you something about the cooling system performance and whether there's any potential issues that you can detect at an early stage. Collecting samples of coolant can be done in a couple of ways. The preferred method is from a sample valve. Uh, the other way is from a suction pump. If you're gonna install a sample valve, it's important to know where to install them. If you're going to use a suction pump, it could be a safety issue to remove the radiator cap, so it's very important that the engine has been shut down for one or two hours prior to opening it up. Coolant testing can be done in the field and has been done in the field for a long time. The three most common tests are to maintain your coolant level, your coolant concentrations, and your inhibitor levels. Expanding those tests to the laboratory, uh, there's a lot more functionality that we can do in a controlled environment. We can provide details of the pH, the uh, appearance, the refractive index, the inhibitor levels, or the conductivity. So in summary, coolant analysis is a very good and useful thing to do. If you have any questions about this presentation or would like to reach out to Fluid Life, please feel free to. Thank you for your time.